With a new update to Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central, one of the introduced features is the Analyze option given to summarize and pivot data on list pages. It's an extremely powerful feature you can find across the top of a list page within the action bar. Simply clicking it will take you into the Analyze mode, where you can filter, select what data to summarize, and even pivot it. We'll show you all the capabilities soon. Should you not have this present on any of your list pages, first, you or a user with relevant permissions must go to the Feature Management page. Inside here, you'll find a Feature Preview Analysis mode to quickly analyze data directly in Business Central. Make sure this is set to Enabled for All Users. This will enable the feature and you'll just need to refresh the system to use it. This will give access to all users to the feature and do bear in mind that at this current moment in time, this will give you access to the feature on any list page in the system. You can, however, turn this off at any point currently just by changing that enabled for from all users back to none. Now we'll break down the features you can get out of the Analyze option. We're here on the Posted Sales Invoices page with the Analyze feature turned on. Automatically on the right hand side, you can see I've got two options columns and analyze filters. Within here, I've also got sections for my row groups and values when I'm using that columns option. Essentially from here, I'm able to select what I want to display on the page, whether that be for the actual fields above, how I'm grouping them, which I'm currently doing by due date month. As you can see, I'm summarizing my remaining amount on my post sales invoices between January, February, March, and April, and which values I want to include in this summary view. I can click the X's to remove these as required as well as tick or untick the fields I want to see. You'll notice that in the actual core area of the screen, we can expand the information so I can see the individual invoices and who they're for from within each section, seeing what makes up that total and subtotal for each month. I can even drag down certain fields from that top section to the row groups to break down my information differently. So if I drag down currency code, we can now see the information split and totaled by GBP, blank, as well as Euro. You can also enable pivot mode with the toggle in the upper right hand corner. This will make it look and behave very similar to pivot tables within Excel and gives me the option to swap between two different views if required. Like before, we can select certain fields, row groups, values, but now also column labels. So we can set this up to include as much information as we'd like and step into the data as required. Using our second tab, analyze filters, we can add filters to the data. For example, I can open up the currency code and I can choose which currency codes I'd like to include. So if I want to see the view for just euros, I can select that here and get my pivot broken down appropriately. You'll notice that from across the top, we currently have a tab that just says analysis one. We can actually create multiple different views of how we want to look at the data. And if we click the little drop down, you'll see the options we have for this, such as rename, where I can give this a relevant name to look at this again later. I can even create new views by selecting the plus to the right hand side. This will load in all my data by default outside of pivot mode. And I can now build up a second view so I can flip between one and the other. So if I customize this to include things like the document number, customer number, and customize the analyze filters to make sure I'm not including closed documents or any canceled documents. Here, I'm also gonna add in the due date month. I'm gonna move this up in my row groups as well. So it's breaking it down month by month in this case. I can filter by currency code, this time selecting blank for GBP. Because I'm summarizing by due date month, and one of the fields I have on the page is the remaining amount on these invoices, I can see a breakdown of how much I'm expecting to receive from my GBP customers per month in this case, basing it around that due date. You'll notice that we can also filter on top of these as well if necessary to include multiple different currency codes if I wanted to, and I can even include additional filters and use a little drop down, select if I want that filter to be something that's contained within the data, not contained, equal, and so on and so forth, even things such as blank and not blank. And because of how I set up the pivot, I can expand each bit of data and see the month, in this case, the document number, and then the customer number. That might not be ideal, so I can come back to my columns tab, reorganizing those row groupings just so it goes by customer number and then document number. Now, when I open each header, it's gonna be separated by customer number, and then the documents associated with that customer. I can again rename this so I understand what I'm looking at later on when I come back to this. In this case, a GBP customer invoice breakdown, and I can swap between the two whenever I turn on the analyze mode now or later. I've added in a new tab just to show off a few more of the additional features. 
For example, when I hover over a column header and I click the button, I've got a couple options here. I can choose to pin a column either to the left or to the right of the screen. It goes either to the left or the right and will stay there even when I scroll across, very similar to a freeze pane. So I can stick data to the left and the right. You'll notice as well that because I'm not currently in pivot mode, I'm able to actually select things such as the document number and open up that document. Also within that sub menu across the columns, if we choose to pin right, it just looks like so, data sticking within the middle, and when I scroll to the left and the right, some data will remain. I can always go to a column header and choose no pin if I want it to restore back to where it originally was. You'll notice that we can also auto size each column from this dropdown, even add it as a grouping, reset the columns or reset the analysis filters as well. If you click on the header, we'll be able to sort the data as well. And when clicking into a header for a column, that's a value. You'll be able to actually choose the value aggregation, such as sum, minimum, maximum, and so on and so forth. This can also be selected from the value section on the right hand side. If you click on a particular value, you can change the aggregation. Let's go back to pivot mode. Well, you notice we can do most of the same things here. But we also do have that column label section we haven't talked about yet. If I drag down due date month from the top down into the column label section, you can see across the top it's separated into one long report, breaking down by each month. Also, when we right click a field, you'll notice we've got a few options here to copy the fields or even export it out to a CSV, or more importantly, Excel. We can open these files and it'll just be a representation of what we just exported. You can turn analyze mode on and off with the analyze toggle across the top of a list page, and that will restore it back to the default view. There are a few things you need to know about the analyze mode as well. Firstly, any filters you have applied to the page before turning on analyze will remain in that analyze view. And this is quite good. As of right now, there's a maximum limit of data you can actually have within the analyze view itself, 100,000 lines. Any more than this, and you'll get a warning and won't be able to actually turn on analyze mode until you apply a filter against the data to limit that data set. A couple of different fields you can use for this will be things such as due date, allowing you to filter out data that's not relevant for the current purpose. So for example, I'm here filtering over a year. Another one you could use is the number field, filtering on the number of entries or document numbers, depending on what you need to do to limit the amount of data coming through. Using those dot dots in our filters to establish a range, saying from one document number or one entry number to another. As you can see when I turn on the analyze mode now, the amount of data in here is restricted to what we would have seen previously. You can open and close the filter pane while still in analyze mode to apply additional filters or to change the filter. And on top of that as well, you can also add in additional analysis filters if you'd like to. Bear in mind that right now the analyze feature is available on all list pages. Microsoft are looking to expand the amount of data you can load into the analyze view, as well as give functionality to allow you to determine which pages you can use the analyze view on. One thing to note is that currently we can only set up analyze views for ourselves. At this moment, it's not something we can set up via customizing a role as we would do for a standard save view. But that's a look at the new Analyze feature within Business Central. It's a powerful tool that rivals exporting the information out to Excel, including multiple layouts and analysis views using those tabs across the top to quickly load into data in formats you're interested in. As this is a new feature, there are things subject to change, including some of the things I mentioned throughout this video, so keep your eye on how this will develop over time.